Good morning. Good to see everyone on this fine day that God has blessed us with. It is a double special day. Today is Christ the King Sunday. It is the last Sunday on the Christian calendar year. And it is also our Stewardship Pledge Sunday, where we will celebrate that God gives us so much that we can give to others to help them come to God's love as well. And after worship, if you can't smell it, there's a wonderful lunch being made for everyone to go down and gather at the tables to celebrate, to keep the celebration going. So do join us. Um, the schedule for this week will begin with some parish notes. The schedule for this week, the nominations committee, lay leadership development committee, will meet this afternoon at four o'clock. The finance committee uh, and administrative council meet tomorrow evening, six o'clock and seven o'clock respectively. And also Tuesday brings Christian Connections, our, <clears throat> our Bible study, virtual Bible study. You can stay home, but feed your soul. And Wednesday brings the Wednesday morning crew. And then the SPRC meeting is Wednesday night at 6.30, not Thursday night. So Wednesday at 6.30 for the SPRC meeting. Um, the donation station, we continue, and we will continue into December to collect items for the residents of Wesley Village for Christmas. Um, so please do continue to bring things in so we can get them over there by the middle of December. Um, and then next week, we have something new and different for the donation station. Looking at our Advent opportunities, Advent starts next week. Again, now we're into a new year on the Christian calendar. And so if you have not seen anything yet about it, um, please do talk to me if you're interested after worship, or you can pick up a paper to write an Advent devotion for our MUMC Family Advent Devotional Booklet that we're putting together. Um, it is going to be wonderful. We already have a few entries, so please do share your story with our family. Um, Advent wreath affirmations. There will be a huge wreath going up where we can put affirmations of our faith that we experience during, as we journey through and during this Advent season that is upon us. There will be an Advent discussion group. Uh, it's called Experiencing Christmas, and that is a curriculum from Cokesbury, and it talks about cr experiencing Christmas through using all of our senses, as Jesus did and as we do present day. Um, let me know if you would be interested in that also um, so that I can get the curriculum to you. We're looking to do a service project, and then we have our Paint and Praise Night on the 7th at 6 o'clock, which is always a good time, and Breakfast with Santa and the Cookie Walk. Um, that is Saturday, December 9th, 10 to 12. Anything else on the Santa breakfast or the Cookie Walk? Yes, Lori. Okay. Okay, so Lori Regal. Lori Regal's looking for bakers for the cookie walk and tins, right? Yes, and tins. So please do see her about that. Anything else for breakfast? We're set? Okay. <laughs> Thumbs up. Um, also, our annual church conference is approaching. It was supposed to be in October, but now it is in December, mid-December. Uh, it's on a Thursday evening on the 14th at 6.30. Everyone is urged to come out for this. It will be led by our district superintendent, Reverend Judy Walker. And the joyous chorus has begun. They sang once and shall sing again today. And you can always join with the chorus from where you are at. Um, any other announcements? Any other announcements? Glenn, do you have something to share with us? Yes. Good morning. Good morning. 
living each day as a steward. In your worship folder, you will find a trifold brochure titled The Stewardship's Lifestyle. Please read it during this coming week. To live each day as a steward means that we develop a lifestyle of stewardship. For most of us, the big challenge of living a lifestyle of stewardship is to give generously of the money that God has entrusted to us. Giving is not a natural inclination. Because of our self-interest, we are inclined to take care of ourselves first and others second. If we rely on our own strength to give, we are likely to hoard what we have. When we give generously to God by supporting our church and helping the needy, we show that our faith and trust are in him rather than in our money and possessions. We need to remember that God wants us, he wants the givers, not the gifts from the givers. He doesn't need our gifts, but we have a need to give. When Jesus asked the rich man in Mark chapter 10 to give all that he had to the poor, he went away sad because he was unable to give up his possessions. The rich young man didn't possess his possessions, they possessed him. When the heart of Zacchaeus was changed, he willingly gave half of his possessions to the poor. This transformation in Zacchaeus was remarkable because before that time, his money had been his life. But having experienced Jesus' love for him, his gratitude to Jesus changed his perspective on both money and possessions. His giving revealed a new heart. We are unable to give because of who God is and what he has done for us. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whoever believes in him shall not perish but have eternal life, John 3:16. We can love because he first loved us, John 4:19. As recipients of God's grace and love, we are empowered to share God's gifts with others. May God help us all live each day as a steward as we give generously of our time and our money. Thank you, Glenn, for sharing with us. We will be highlighting um, next week, uh, you will see some slides, but to think of all that you make possible on this Stewardship Pledging Sunday, all of the collections that we have, all of the giving that we do, the hats, the infant hats and the prayer shawls. We can't keep up with those babies being born at CMC. Um, and the prayer blankets, um, the donation station, the food pantry, vacation Bible school for so many children in the area, Sunday school and all that the Sunday school does, the Learning Tree Preschool, done amazing the past couple years. We have a waiting list now. We are thankful for all that we have, that God gives us these opportunities and that we can continue them on through the stewardship, that we are called to live a lifestyle uh, um, <clears throat> anything else? If not, then let us begin to truly worship our God in the spirit of prayer. Let us pray. Glorious, almighty, and awesome God. Lord, what a wonderful morning to worship your holiness as grateful people, blessed people as your church. We recognize Christ, our great and all-powerful King, who sacrificed everything for us despite ourselves. We lift praise for our abundance and grace as we celebrate our Christian duty to be good stewards every day. Lord, we worship to affirm that you are indeed our giving God, every present, ever present, fully supreme for us and with us. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. If you'll please rise for the call to worship. Heavenly Father, you have called us to be stewards of the gospel so others will hear the good news. Help us, Lord, by word and action to be faithful to your calling as we acquaint those around us of your love and the redeeming power of your son's death on the cross. Lord, 
Dear God, through your grace, our stewardship changes from specific acts to a lifestyle of stewardship. Because you transform our hearts, we are eager to do good works that please and honor you. Lord God, in our lifestyle of stewardship, we commit our lives, our gifts, and resources to serving you and fulfilling your will for our lives. Dear Lord, as the Holy Spirit works in us through your word, you teach us to become givers rather than takers. You change us into people who understand stewardship to be a joy rather than a duty. Our opening hymn today for Christ the King Sunday is 327, Crown Him with Many Crafts. the children please come forward for their message time. How is everyone today? Good? Did you have a good weekend so far? Long weekend, right? Get to sleep in? 
You got your Christmas tree yesterday? <gasps> That's exciting. And tell me, how was Thanksgiving? We talked about that last week a little bit. Good? How about you? <gasps> Today you're going to put your Christmas tree up? Well, have fun, okay? Yes, that's a good time, putting a Christmas tree up and decorating it. Getting it all ready for who? Santa Claus. Yep, that's it. For Santa Claus. Oh, by the way, remember, next week is my favorite children's time of the whole year with Santa Claus. And who really is, what is it we celebrate for Christmas? Jesus' birthday. Thank you. Yes. Oh, oh, it's ready to decorate? Oh, that's great. Now, tell me, did, who ate turkey on Thanksgiving? Okay, who ate turkey the day after Thanksgiving? Oh, how about that? So, let me see. I brought some containers up here. Do you see them? What are they? Where do we usually see these containers? Huh? At restaurants. Because that's what we take our leftovers home with, right? They're leftover containers. So at your house, are there lots of leftover containers maybe in the refrigerator and around right now? Oh, they're laughing, saying yes. Okay. So tell me. If someone special is coming to your house, someone really special, would your mom or your dad or whoever cooks in the house, would they go and get all those leftovers, all these containers out, and give them to the special visitor that's coming? Would they? Hey, that would be great and easy, wouldn't it? Yes. Oh, that's very nice. I like that. So... If someone special, again, was coming to your house, what do you think, Mr. Chimileski? Would you get those leftovers out, or would your dear wife make new food? Give them all away. Well, how about if Jesus was coming? <gasps> what if Jesus was coming to sit with us at our table? Would we make a grand feast for him or go and just get these leftover containers? Huh? Grand feast. Because we are to give Jesus the best of the best, right? Because Jesus gives us the best. Yes. Well, <laughs> well, but what if all of a sudden Jesus just showed up and we didn't have that grand feast and we had to pull out these leftovers? What do you think Jesus would think of us? Huh? Not nice? Great? I think Jesus would think we're great because Jesus would really take anything that we have to give. Yes, it's what we're supposed to do is give the best, but if we have something to give, oh, we are blessed. We are happy people. And so that we can take these containers out and share them with Jesus, he'd be happy with that. Does Jesus make you happy every day? Whether it's something great and fancy or something just like this, right? So we are to do the same thing, to give to others what we have. And we can always remember that we have new things and we have always what they call leftovers, but leftovers can sometimes be better than the real thing, right? There you go. <laughs> Jenny is dying up here. Okay, then let us pray about all this. Let's pray. Glorious and heavenly Father, Lord, we thank you for all that you give to us in this life. We thank you that we have so much to give. We give to you the best of the best as we can. And when we can't, Lord, we still have so much that we have leftovers that we can share with you and with your people. And Lord, as we go on to the next holiday, bless us as we go through decorating and
doing things with our family, and the, but let us always remember to be thankful. Keep Thanksgiving going. And we pray this all in Jesus' name, and all of God's children said, Amen. Amen. You may go back. And now, if the members of the joyous chorus will come forward. We'll be singing today, Holy, Holy, Holy. It's number 64 in the hymnal. If anyone would like to sing along, please do so. Thank you to our joyous chorus for the wonderful presentation this morning. I would like everyone to join me in the prayer for illumination. Lord, open our eyes to see and our ears to hear the wondrous truths in your precious word. Provide us with spiritual bread to serve you better. Amen. Our epistle reading this morning is from 2 Corinthians Chapter 8, verses 3 to 8. For I testify that they gave as much as they were able, and even beyond their ability, 
in, entirely on their own, they urgently pleaded with us for the privilege of sharing in this service of the Lord's people. And they exceeded our expectations. They gave themselves first of all to the Lord, and then by the will of God also to us. So we urged Titus, just as he had earlier made a beginning, to bring also to completion this act of grace on your part. But since you excel in everything, in faith, in speech, in knowledge, in complete earnestness, and in the love we have kindled in you, see that you also excel in this grace of giving. I am not commanding you, but I want to test the sincerity of your love by comparing it with the earnestness of others. Thank you, Carol. You always weave a mess into our message this morning as we look to see what God has done. Our gospel reading this morning is from the book of Matthew, chapter 10, verses 5 through 8. These 12 Jesus sent out with the following instructions. Do not go among the Gentiles or enter any town of the Samaritans. Go rather to the lost sheep of Israel. 
As you go, proclaim this message. The kingdom of heaven has come near. Heal the sick, raise the dead, cleanse those who have leprosy, drive out demons. Freely you have received. Freely give. Please join me with the word from God. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Thank you, Diane. <clears throat> Let us pray. Heavenly Father, melt me, mold me, and use me this day to bring your message to your people. Amen. Well, both readings for our final week in our stewardship program, Living Each Day as a Steward, both readings for this final week are prime verses. For just that, living each day as stewards, by talking the talk and walking the walk of offering a vision of simply being caretakers for our Lord in that new lifestyle that we receive once we believe. In, in and through all that we do and we go through, let us live in this manner. We are to know who we are, say what we are to say through our God in prayer, and do everything for the honor of our Lord. The Apostle Paul wrote to the church in Corinth, we hear these words this morning, but he is giving them here an example from another region from the Macedonians. He is witnessing to their work that they had been doing so that he's encouraging the people, the church in Corinth. They gave as they could, individually, yet when their everything, their contributions were brought together, it was for the good of all people and all had everything that they needed. Each person wouldn't go without a thing. They cared for each other, including the poor Christians who were in Jerusalem, the holy city. They made sure they were taken care of. And what God bestowed upon them in every facet of their lives, they did all they could to use more than just their finances. As has been woven throughout this stewardship program, they gave first and foremost, in every message we hear this, to their Lord. Then, according to God's will, they expanded sharing in grace. Not only did they give as was their duty, they did so with joyful motivation for the lives of Jesus the Christ, Jesus the King, who made everything possible for each person and for Jesus' people, who were becoming more and more every day. They excelled by doing so, as scripture states, in faith, in speech, in knowledge, in all earnestness, in all our love for you, adding, see that you excel in this act of grace also. Paul is penning these words to again encourage those first Christians who were listening and for really all Christians, it's timeless, to keep paying for their overflowing contentment, keep that going in grace. Nothing compares to grace. The unmerited, unearned love of God to which all believers have access to and are ex to extend their dependent wealth their dependent wealth from their God, from above, that true love, we are to extend it freely, flowing freely, as it is freely given. Now it is needed to point out here that the Macedonians 
were not get, really living the high life. They were actually going through extreme difficult times. But out of their poverty, it was that they were giving like this. Out of their poverty, they freely gave to do God's will. They chose to do so with that grace that forever keeps on giving. All their living, all their necessities, they knew all of this was the absolute care of God. This is the care of God. So whatever amount is given, large or small, what was given was acceptable because it was given from the right faith frame of heart and mind. This concept of stewardship is discovered in the story of a man named Vince. We can hear this in his story. He was, this is from a long time ago, he happened to be at college enjoying his life. This was the beginning of the Great Depression, long, long ago. But with the stock market crash, his family called him home. He had no choice really there but to go home to help his family. So that's what he did. The firm <coughs> that his father owned was bankrupt. His parents had lost their home, and once he got home, you know, home is where the heart is at that point, every day, really, Vince was tasked with helping to collect some back debts from his father's business that people owed to the family. On his first call, Vince, he climbed the broken steps of an old dilapidated house. He knocked and two small children came to the door. And then he looked at them, they're dirty, they're dressed in rags. And he asked, is anybody home? And each of them answered, I am, I am. And then a third child came. And together they said, we are. Just when a worn and tired, just then a worn and tired looking mother came into the scene. Is there anything I can do, she asked. Vince hesitated in that moment. He felt it was useless to try to collect the bill that they owed from a family living in such poverty-stricken conditions. Finally, he pulled from his pocket his last dollar bill and he handed it to the woman and said, it's for the kids to see the circus. Take them to see the circus. And he left. It's a true story. And Vince went on to become a successful building contractor. As he reflected on that early experience in his life, he said later, I felt so uplifted by that small gift that I was able to give. And I continued that throughout my life. So we never know what someone is going through and what they need. God helped me, he said, to develop that lifestyle of giving. I didn't plan it that way, but the more I give, the more I seem to get back in return. That's God's promise in regard to giving. That's Vince's story of giving, learning about it. The more we give by trusting in our God, even through tough times, the more we shall experience showers, continuous showers of blessings from our God. God's word teaches us to become better givers rather than takers and trans asks us to transform people. As we are transformed, we are to be people always transforming to give of ourselves, of our lives, of our gifts, our resources in service to the Lord as Christian stewards. When we become self-giving people who please and honor God, we are in close 
relationship with our Lord to make that happen, to do all of our deeds of stewardship. And those deeds will most definitely come to a complete, responsive lifestyle of stewardship. That's what ministry is all about. It's what it's all about. It is a positive response that emphasizes positive things. Certainly, we have had the experience, which was revealed to us, that the fact that it is more pleasing when we give, we receive, we know that, we have felt that, I'm sure. It makes living as stewards enjoyable. It makes it enjoyable. We notice and we produce more positivity in the promises of forever. That we do this more than any other people will do that haven't come to know and accept Christ yet. We do this even in the temporary fallouts of the consequences of an unstable world. Because God is constant. We can do it. We share our holy riches as necessary. It is a necessity to do so. But it isn't designed to leave us feeling just fearless or hopeless. That makes no sense. As a matter of fact, we are much better off even because God blesses us through our giving. We have God's word on it. Our stewardship lifestyles are to strengthen and enhance our faith, that we look forward to doing it more and more, to let the world know in its brokenness the kingdom of heaven is actually among us. We have it all. We have it all. For our Savior has overcome the hardships of this world, conquered everything, even death. Plus, we are empowered to do the same for ourselves and for those who are less fortunate. Those who might catch our attention, we are summoned. God summons us to them calls us to care for those if we are out and about and we see their downcast faces. We are to give them something uplifting from our God. God will provide what it is we need to do for them. And we are to live in a way of uplifting praise, enhanced, unforgettable encounters of grace that we have like this. In addition to our Christian duty to give financially, again, we are to talk the talk. We are to walk the walk. More than that, we are to run, skip, and jump what we believe in, in the joy of the Lord of the people. People are sure then to take notice of us when we live the joy of our faith. And when they do, when they notice us as Christians, Tell them an old, old story, how the Savior came from glory to give his life on Calvary for such a wretch like me. Why? Because of the foundation of all of this, all of our giving and all of our living, because of love. Love is that strong foundation that will never break and binds us together. It knows no boundaries. It claims us as forgiven people and gives us the conquering victory that no one can ever take away from us. In turn, we proclaim that breathing gift, the breathing gift of love that moves through each and all of us giving to others. May we each live this lifestyle of faith, gifting those to take notice. Let people take notice. Give them this new carefree way of living that we know to be caring then themselves, that they too will live each day knowing God comes first 
and be God's precious, prosperous stewards. Amen. Our hymn of response today on Stewardship Pledge Sunday is from the Black Hymnal, 2130. It is called The Summons. If you will please rise, let us sing together. Amen. Please be seated. As we come to a time of prayer in the community of faith, do we have any new concerns to lift up? Yes, sis. Okay. So some good news, but some really patient to be a patient news. <laughs> it, it is resolving, okay. Well, that's good news. But now it's the waiting again. Yes. Well, continued prayers of strength. Yes, you shall make it. Yes, Donna.
Okay, thank you. So prayers for Doris Rose. Anyone else? Yes. Okay. Thank you very much. We will be praying for her in her time of grief, but yet faith realized. Yes. Thank you. Anyone else? Nancy. Okay. Okay. For Ted and for Carol. We will say some extra prayers. Absolutely. Anyone else? How about any joys anyone would like to share? Donna. That's wonderful. Congratulations. <laughs> Congratulations, Donna. Enjoy, enjoy. Yes. Anyone else? Any other joys to share? The little kids are wanting joys to share. <laughs> Anyone else? Thank you all for sharing. Let us go to God in silent prayer. Pray from your heart to the God who loves you. Let us pray. O Lord, our King, our great God and King, whose reign is perfect in love and light, Lord, your call upon our lives to progressively and positively live a life of generous stewardship echoes through the hurts and the hardships of the needy, of those yearning for renewal of hope, May we answer your summons, Lord, with joyful obedience, mindful of Christ, our Savior and our mighty, humble King, who shows us the truth of sincere service. Make our faith worthy of your faith, Lord, in us. Make our lives worthy of your life that you gave for us. Make our love an extension of your kingdom love, your mighty incredible gentle grace and lord we lift up much this day in our hearts to you just self between self and savior as well as lord we lift up to you all those on our prayer list and all of our circle of prayer churches our brothers and sisters in christ and lord we lift up to you by name we continue to pray for merle and for sis Give him, give them both that patience to be a patient and keep going on every little bit of good news that they receive, Lord. And Lord, we lift up Doris Rose to you and Karen and her family in this time. We lift up Sandra Stark in her time of grief as she begins this journey. Let her find strength in her faith and Lord, we lift up Ted and Carol to you that, you, that they would feel your embrace of love and of healing around them. Lord, give everybody guidance and the answers they are looking for, care and compassion, as only you can do. Lord, we thank you and praise you that we can live a life of stewardship. And Lord, we thank you and praise you for new life that comes into this world and for families that grow and grow in your great love that we hear of this day. And Lord, let us now continue to pray using the words that Jesus taught us to pray together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done 
on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Will the ushers please come forward to collect this morning's tithes and offerings and our blessed pledges for 2024. Please join with me in saying our special stewardship con pledge consecration prayer. Gracious God, we, your stewards, ask for your blessing on our mutual pledges to build and nurture this faith community, empowering us to spread the gospel of your willed love. Grant that our offerings of discipleship might supply not only the needs of our mission and ministry, but that it may overflow with much honor to you. Grant that we may answer your call for all our giving with joyful, obedient hearts. Amen. Our hymn of sending forth on this Stewardship Pledge Sunday and Christ the King Sunday is Freely Freely 389. Let us sing together. Mm -hmm. 